in our last and final video for the Unit 5 project. Um, I have a few things I want to cover before I start with the enemy projectile that we're about to program, right? So again, we got the enemy um, movement down. We have the sort of checking conditions for what happens uh, when our enemy runs out of lives, but I just wanted to show a few more things. So in my player script, as you can remember, when we have each uh, level uh, end, we have this broadcast and it says level two start, level three start. So you can see right here, I've added these conditions to my main character that are basically going to say each time we hit that level, we're going to broadcast and say, hey, you've reached level two. So the user knows what's going on. And then, of course, when I receive game win, I also hide. Um, in just a minute, we're going to be programming the enemy projectiles. They're going to behave uh, very similarly to our hero's projectiles. And I've added this little line of code right here that I feel like it makes sense even without having the uh, projectiles for the um, enemy program. So it's basically just a win. We're touching that bad projectile. We're going to set players' lives as we've created over here earlier in our videos to uh, basically itself minus one. And then we're going to broadcast player move to go back up here. But if the player lives are zero, we're going to broadcast game lose and stop everything. Um, you can also see down here, if I receive game win, I hide. And um, I've programmed something into my stage right here, just a couple of things. If I receive game win, we're going to switch to the game win screen, which you can see right there. And when I receive game lose, we switch to that. So that's pretty much what I've added. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our bad dude and we're going to program in sending enemy projectiles very quickly. What I want to show is basically how we're going to send these enemy projectiles, right? One thing that we uh, know from the project assignment is that we want the enemy projectiles to be sent randomly, right? So we want them to, uh, we don't want them just to continuously fire we want there to be a chance that they'll fire. And how I've decided to do that is to basically use a variable and a pick random block. So here I'm going to say, um, I'm gonna create a variable called shot. I'm gonna call it proj, so projectile decider. And that's when we're gonna name it. And um, I am going to set that to a number. So I'm gonna set my shot decider right here to pick random and as soon as i find my pick random um, now of course i've already created this i kind of know what works out so i'm going to say one to three hundred um, and this pick random is going to be used like so i'm going to go to control i'm going to use an if block and i'm basically going to say if my shot decider variable is equal to one then I want to fire. So here I'm gonna to go to variables, I'm gonna to go to projectile decider, say if projectile fire decider is equal to one, which means we have on any given moment, every single time that this script is ran through, we have a one to 300 chance. We have a one out of 300 chance of firing our projectile, right? So I'm gonna to go to control and I'm gonna broadcast something that's gonna be picked up by my shot decider or by my bad projectile. So right here, I'm going to say, um, man, what do I want? I think I'm going to do enemy projectile and click OK. So now it's going to broadcast that and that is going to be picked up by our bad projectile right over here. So now that we go here, the bad projectile is actually very similar to the regular projectile. So I am going to duplicate a lot of this, put it there, duplicate this, put it there and duplicate this as well. So as you can see now we have all those scripts right here and these are what we're gonna use and we're gonna modify them. There's no reason to completely recreate the wheel um, in creating these scripts. So again, when I receive game start, I'm going to hide um, and I'm also going to say, um, instead of this, I want to make a a variable called enemy project num, so enemy projectile number. And of course we know from the uh, good projectile when this, we wanna basically restrict the count of these uh, clones, right? Cause we don't want a whole ton spawning in at once. So I am going to check if enemy projectile is 
less than, I'm gonna say three instead because I don't want too many, right? When flag is clicked, I set it to zero, I hide. If the enemy projectile is less than three, I wanna create a clone of myself. And then what happens when I start as a clone? Well, I'm gonna change this real quick to enemy projectile number. I'm gonna do the same right here. Uh, enemy projectile number plus minus one. Um, I'm going to speed this down and I want to change the rate of falling from 10 to negative 5 because of course we want it to be um, going straight down and I'm also going to do something else right here. So I'm going to set up an or condition for how I want. I'm going to pull actually a couple things out that way I don't forget, right? So um, based on what I was doing before and the stuff that I know, I actually want this to be 90. Um, that's the direction I want to point to. I want to set the size to 20%. Um, I'm going to show. I have enemy projectile num. Everything here makes sense. I am actually going to repeat the falling until, let me get rid of this, my y position of this variable or of this thing is going to be less than, let's say, negative uh, 200. So I want to keep going until either I am less than 200 or sensing I am touching the user. So here I am touching the player. Um, change Y by negative 5. If I touch the player, if I if my Y is less than negative 200, I am going to delete this clone. And then I'm going to try this right here, but we're going to see some issues that we potentially will run into based on my experience at least. I'm going to set my start position to the, I'm going to set the starting projectile X and Y to the position of bad dude. So bad dude, I'm going to set it to the Y position is the Y position we'll start at. And the X position of bad dude is the X position that we will start at. Now I'm checking my programming. I think I'm going to do right here instead of send projectile, it's going to be enemy projectile that we want to receive. I think that looks correct. When I receive game start, I want to hide. Um, I'm going to add that in, but I don't know if I truly need it. Because I want to have, when I game start, duplicate, hide, just in case. Um, when the flag is clicked, and when I start as clone, basically do the same as we would do with a normal projectile. So we're going to go ahead and click start. And we're going to see what happens. So if they come through now, there should be an odd chance that the projectiles will actually fire, actually fire, and we should be hit. So, as we can see, that is not happening. And we need to figure out why. So I'm gonna go back to bad dude. We can see um, when we start as a clone, we're gonna do enemy movement. I'm doing a pick random for X to the project to projectile. Ugh. You know, I'm gonna go out. I know where I made a mistake. Instead of using shot decider, I use, I use projectile decider. Where do I use shot decider? Right here. Click OK. And that should work. So now we can see that the when I start is clone block is triggered. And then you can see that we fire. Now here's an issue. If you can tell my projectiles are only firing from over here, right? Because that is, at one point, the original position of bad dude. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do something to make this work. So I am going to go into enemy movement, and I'm going to update variables that will tell me where my projectile needs to fire from. So x project chord. For all sprites, I'm going to create that variable, and then I'm going to make a new variable called y proj chord, so y projectile coordinate. Press OK, and then I'm going to set, as soon as it'll let me, two variables, right? I'm actually going to set them underneath my change y, so I'm going to set the uh, x project coordinate and the y project coordinate equal to the, um, let's see what I want to set it equal to. I believe I want to set it to the current position. I want to set it to, yeah, I want to set it to my X and Y position. So I go right here. 
my X position, my Y position, and I'm going to click OK here. That's all I needed to do. And then instead of referencing the X and Y position of bad dude, I'm going to pull these down here. I'm going to reference these variables that are being continuously updated. So here, X project coordinate, Y project coordinate, and then I'm going to not show them. And I'm going to go ahead and start now. We should see this projectile coordinate update and fire from a, a more standard position. Yep, and there we can see the coordinates fire from the um, actual positions of the cats now instead of just some random position. And if we put myself in front of them, I will lose a life, I'm losing one more life, and then you'll see as it hits me the last time. What was it hit me? There we go. I finally lose my last life and the game is over and everything stops. So we have reached the end of the Unit 5 project and I just wanted to cover a few things before uh, I ended the unit series. Um, as you can see here, there's, or at least if you've seen throughout the project, there's a few things that the project is missing. So if you were to submit a project exactly like this, you would not get full points, right? Um, a few things that we're missing are point values for what happens when we hit one of the enemies. Um, there's no count or tally or anything that I've built in. Uh, I still do feel like it's relatively simple though. You kind of can attach that to the script that triggers when an enemy is hit. Um, there also is, uh, you know, nothing that happens as of yet when the uh, enemy gets to the very bottom of the screen. Again, I think that's another simple thing. You've learned that already. You know how to implement it if you've watched other videos, so it should be pretty easy. Um, and then I think the last thing is that there's really no uh, flare display in the game. So like, you know, if I get hit, there's no level or life counter. It just is a display that just says, hey, you know, game over. Um, and then we just have a different thing that kind of shows each time we make it to a new level. Um, but with that being said, otherwise, I think we've got the really difficult stuff down and uh, all that is, is very easily tackable, uh, tackle a bolt. Um, but I also just want to say this is uh, the last video I'm making for uh, the entirety of the first semester of Teal's Intro to Programming. I want to thank everyone who supported me and everyone who was with me along the way, uh, helping, make me, helping me make these videos and uh, give me encouragement to continue on. So thank you guys very much.